Welcome back everybody. In this video we are going to talk a little bit about canon. We're going to do some speculation and I want to talk about some rumors that have been floating around. Quick disclaimer, these are just rumors. I have no inside information to anything that's going on and even if I did I probably wouldn't be able to tell you but I don't. So let's have a little bit of fun and speculate what might be coming soon from canon. So we know there is an R5 coming. This isn't really a rumor. It's been pretty much confirmed by canon. There was a press release recently saying that this will have full 8K video with no cropping. It will have full autofocus functionality as a 45 megapixel sensor. This is supposed to come in the summer, but now with the current situation in the world, who knows? There's also been rumors of an R6, which is going to feature a 20 megapixel sensor and body image stabilization, 4K 60p video. It's going to have a slightly lower build quality than the R5. It'll probably come in at a slightly lower price point, much like we have now with the R and the RP. This will be the R5 and the R6. And then we have something really interesting. So there's been rumors going out that there is a camera out for testing with certain photographers right now that is going to be a high resolution version of the R line of mirrorless cameras. This one is rumored at first to be a 150 megapixel sensor, which sounds a little far-fetched considering it is just a full frame sensor size, but others are predicting it might be as high as an 80 megapixel sensor. So this is what I want to talk about in this video. But first I want to give a shout out to our sponsor for this video, who are the awesome folks over at Printique. As you probably know, editing your images isn't the final step in the process. You need a way to print your work so it shows off just how outstanding your photographs can look. Printique by Adorama offers high quality printing services on a variety of beautiful papers and even books. Their books are professionally done and they look absolutely amazing and they're also incredibly easy to make. Just upload your images online and you'll get fast turnaround, fast shipping, so give them a try. And I can save you a little bit of money if you use the link in the description below this video. So check them out and get your work printed today. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to the awesome folks at Printique for sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. So many of you may remember all the way back in 2015 when Canon released two versions of the 5D, which were the 5DS and the 5DR. These were very high megapixel cameras at the time. They were 50.6 megapixels, which is still high by today's standards. The only differences in the two models is that the 50S had the optical low pass filter over the sensor. The R did not. So depending on whether or not you wanted to sacrifice possibilities of moray to get a sharper image, that was up to you as the user. Both of these were interesting because they were not designed to replace the 5D lineup. They were designed as specialty models that would complement the 5D line. So I can completely see Canon wanting to move in this direction. They've always had an interest in the high end, high megapixel, high resolution side of things. And especially considering today, we have the Sony a7R IV, which comes in at 60 megapixels. You probably want to at least try to outdo that for spec bragging rights, if nothing else. Of course, there's two issues that I can see coming up with this. First of all, is going to be low light performance. Obviously, the full frame sensor size is only so big. You're restricted with how big that chip can be. And the more megapixels you're going to cram on there, the more crowding you're going to have. And it just doesn't have the same performance in low light. However, we are in a much different place today with technology than we were in 2015. Maybe there's a way to pull this off on the software end of things. It'll be interesting to see. But the second issue that I have is high megapixel counts. So I've been in a fortunate position in doing these videos where I've gotten a chance to review some really high megapixel cameras. And it used to be 50 was kind of the ceiling with this when you had Hasselblad in the early Fujifilm medium format cameras that were out. Of course, Sony now have 60 megapixels in the a7R4. Fuji now has 100 megapixels in the GFX100. And then I've even gotten to use some of the phase one backs, the 50 back, the 100 back, and the 150 megapixel back. I can tell you that it is really cool to have big files and incredible resolution, especially if you want to have room to crop on anything. But I will also tell you that to me anyway, there's a little bit of a point of diminishing returns on this because it's nice to have that resolution. Do you really need it? Especially if you're not cropping a lot and you're printing, to be honest with you, 12 megapixels is still a lot to get a pretty big print with. So this becomes kind of a niche need in a niche camera. As I mentioned earlier, and it's been pretty much confirmed, but Canon are going to do the R5, which will feature 8K video, which is still a very high resolution. And I would also argue that that is kind of a niche audience too. A lot of people see specs and they think, oh, I want the camera that does 8K. And then you actually get that into an editor and you see what kind of performance you're going to get out of your computer or lack thereof. 8K is wonderful if you are outputting to 4K and you want to have room just to be able to punch in on things or even just downsample the image to have a really sharp image in the end. So there is a use for that. I make a lot of video. I talk about video a little bit on this channel, but I make videos all the time. I'm making one right now and I work in a 4K workflow. It is part of what I 
I do all the time, even though I don't really talk about it. This is a photography channel. We talk about the still side of things, but I can tell you, I'm not sure I'm ready to move to an 8K workflow. I'm not even sure if I want it to punch in. It's just not part of what I do. It would be nice to have, but again, the reason I'm bringing this up is not to bash Canon. I think it's cool that they're going for it, but this is a, another spec that people use for bragging rights, and it's not really something practical that most people are going to use to their day-to-day. -day. Now, why am I even mentioning this stuff? So it comes down to this. We have seen over the last 10 plus years, the camera industry doing this in terms of sales. It is also, interestingly, a market that is also very competitive. There are more options in products that are out there in lenses and camera bodies than we've ever had before. Even phones are getting really strong. I've done a lot of reviews of phones for that reason. There is no excuse to have gear that is not going to take a good image at any price point, and that is a reality. And so what I'm saying is that I hope that Canon are looking at this from a different perspective, because believe it or not, I really do want to see Canon succeed with this. So based on what I just said, the only way that you're going to make money on any product in any industry is that, that you're providing something that fulfills a need that people have. This is difficult in the photography industry because quite frankly, you can use any camera made in the last five to 10 years. You can even shoot film. I mean, there isn't really much that you can't do at this point. And I think that we've kind of sort of started to max out the technology side. So a lot of companies start looking at specs like 50 megapixels, 100 megapixels, 150 megapixels. They look at video in terms of 8K or even 16K will be there one day. And is this fulfilling a need or is this just having a spec that you're using to brag with? So this year I got the EOS R, which I think is a very strange camera with some really weird issues to it. How However, I did get this camera so I could start working with some of Canon's lenses and I've done a couple reviews for you guys already and I have a few more in the hopper that I'm working on. I think that Canon have knocked it out of the park with what they're doing in lens design with the RF mount. This is the camera that is available for it right now. We don't have the R5 yet at the time I'm filming this and of course these are just rumors we're talking about. This is also a first version of this camera. They have not done really anything in the full frame mirrorless sector before so I totally expect that there would be some weird issues on here. I do give them credit for trying things like the touch bar. I do also think that it's bizarre that you get this weird hang so it avoids blackout but it stutters and it's just it's it's really weird. However the image quality is good enough on this and I've even said in my lens reviews that if this is all that's available right now this and the RP I think it's worth buying a body just to be able to use these lenses with. They really are that good. Now this is a camera that also does video. It also shoots in Canon log profiles and it is limited at four 4K and the 4K mode is very weird. So is it just a matter of cleaning up some things on the R moving forward that would give you a reason to want to buy this? I don't think so because Canon have a very mature DSLR lineup that really just, just doesn't have the same issues. And this is kind of where it gets weird because what is going to give people an incentive and a reason to want to switch systems? I think lenses are an excellent direction. However, you could also argue that there are already great lenses out there in a multitude of systems, Canon's included. So what is going to give people the incentive to want to get into Canon mirrorless. I think it comes down to one thing, and I think the camera companies realize this. I don't think that the photography community as a whole necessarily realizes this. And it comes down to why are we doing mirrorless? And Sony, when they came out of the gate with their first APS-C cameras with the NEX lineup a long time ago, their big selling point was that, well, we got rid of the mirror box so you can do a very compact camera. That was the selling point. And I think people are still stuck on the whole myth that that's what mirrorless is all about, is just having smaller equipment. Equipment. And we can clearly see that Canon don't care about that because these lenses that they produced for the RF line are massive, which is fine. So we know that it's not compactness. So what is it? I feel like I've said this a million times when I've done videos on Sony, but what it comes down to, and Sony clearly realized this right now, is that without the mirror, you are getting a full data readout nonstop from the sensor. Now we are a little bit limited in the current technology with what we can do with that data readout, but what Sony has done to differentiate what they do is they focused in, no pun intended that actually was really bad but they have honed in on autofocus and they have one of the best autofocus systems it does tracking the a9 will do 20 frames a second raw shooting it's really amazing what they've been able to do i think autofocus is a big part of it but i think it is just the tip of the iceberg and i think once we have some kind of breakthrough in the technology with what goes into a camera in terms of the processor so on and so forth this is where it's anybody's game to be wide open and i think canon could be the really silent player in this i really would love to see that honestly now one one thing that I get a little skeptical of, and I know I'm not the only one with this opinion, but what is this trade-off? What sacrifices are we making for these incredible specs that Canon are putting out? Now, Canon Australia released
released a press release last week and they did confirm that it will shoot 8K with no crop. It'll use the full frame. It will have full autofocus features with dual pixel AF and they're actually going to even have IAF and things like animal IAF and then the ability to track faces and bodies when the eyes are not in frame. And I think this is awesome. However, this is also a company that with the exception of the 1DX line, they really do cripple cameras. They haven't been able to do 4K right. I personally think that you can expect to see that trade-off being the price point. The R5 is not going to be an inexpensive camera. Of course, you can make an argument saying that, well, if you have a camera that has these specs in it, that it will drive sales in the bottom line because people who don't need 8K video, they don't need all the autofocus features. They might be happy with something that is less expensive. This seems like what makes sense to have an R6 for, but I really would like to see Canon just get 4K right finally and have a camera that just works with specs that are more realistic for most people who are going to be using them. I would love to know what you guys think. Drop me a comment below. I think this is an interesting conversation to have with the current situation with the global pandemic right now. I don't think we're going to see any new cameras for the unseeable future until this gets solved. So I thought it might be kind of fun to talk about at least for today. Catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.